Welcome to Coding Coens, where together we will explore the world of software, get better jobs, and change the world. My name's Ian Carroll. I'm a software developer, um, and uh, I, it's uh, getting on Christmas season, so I'm wearing one of my favorite sweaters. Uh, I hope you're wearing a favorite sweater of your own, or, you know, whatever makes you comfortable. Because uh, when you're developing software, you don't need to wear a suit. No one cares. No one should care about a suit. Unless, of course, you want to wear a suit, in which case, absolutely wear a suit. Speaking of nothing to do with any of that, I want to talk about my guest today. Uh, so, um, Jessica Lynn Verity um, uh, is an improviser, and as such, I'm going to improvise her introduction. Um, so, uh, let's see here. She is one of the key members of the improv group Ripley. Um, and she also was improvising in a show with me uh, as a guest one time on Night Shift, which is Improvised Star Trek. She has her own character on the Improvised Generation. Uh, she uh, produces, she has her own Twitch channel. Uh, she does um, num numerous things that I am unaware of, um, and I, I shudder to think of what some of those might be, uh, because, to be honest, uh, she, she terrifies me. Um, and that's just the truth. Jessica, welcome to the show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're... Terrifies you? Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, okay, um, yes. Is it because I have, uh, because I'm, I'm uber feminist SJW? Well, yes, and it's also <laughs> because of how, um, how vibrant your chi is. Oh. Um, how, like, there is, there's, like, this pulsing thing around you and it's like whoa that's a lot of energy okay <laughs> got it so we've talked about this a little bit before together like you're you're an introvert who's either learned how to be extroverted or likes to be extroverted would we would you say that about yourself um okay so amongst improvisers uh they might consider me to be um soft-spoken and introverted a little bit um on that side in comparison to you, I would definitely say yes. <laughs> um, uh, among uh, software developers, I'm the ultra extrovert. Got, got it. Yeah. So yeah. I guess we could say ambivert for you. I, I guess my reason for asking as a contrast, I know that I have a lot of energy. And introverts are drawn to that. I don't understand it. I'm drawn to introverts because I want them to be more uh, effusive. <laughs> so I want to draw that out of them. Uh -huh. um, but I have learned how to some extent, uh, even out, let's say, mm. like, ah, because I don't want to dumb down who I am. I can't. No, I, you I don't, shouldn't. I, life, life isn't interesting, but I don't want to scare you. Well, no, I mean, like, I've, I've gotten that occasionally, like in if if I'm in a certain mood, I can have a similar kind of energy, and I notice that, like, you know, I even have one person. It doesn't work for everybody. So sometimes uh, it it can be intimidating. Yeah, 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 um, I, yeah. I, that's the, it, my I guess the reason why that's interesting. The word intimidation is used. I understand that, especially because I too have looked at people and go, "Oh my God, they're so cool," and so it's kind of odd for me to elicit that in somebody because yep. I tend to be the person that does that. Well, but I also hope. I want to be an equalizer. I want to go like, no, you and I are cool. Like we're hanging out. This is like, we're equals, you know? So I, I guess it has, I haven't done my magic with you yet to, for you to know that we're on, on the same level. Well, I mean, um, uh, there's a I lot just, of that's things. That's me giving you that. Okay. Uh, like any two people, um, there are things that each of us are expert in that the other is not. Um, and, uh, frankly, I very much respect that. <laughs> Have you heard, it's, uh, what is it? It's not, it's not a tribe theory, but in any given, like, let's say primitive culture or small culture, you have about a hundred people. And if you heard about like when two monkeys, uh, <laughs> I'm not explaining myself well. Okay. They'll have like, monkeys will have a little village and they'll have like a natural leader. And when it starts expanding past 50 to a, almost 100 monkeys, their two leaders naturally form and go head to head and then split off the cultures. Like one will go that way. So, what some 
sociologists or whatever would assume from that is humans were only allowed we only can like maintain about a hundred people close to us in a certain form. Mm -hmm. And so when you throw in internet and Instagram and things like that, we are getting exposed to the people that are the best of the best, where if we were just in a society of about a hundred, you would be the best coder. I would be the best actor and that would be okay. You wouldn't yeah. look at me and go, why am I not that? Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we would all have assigned roles and we're not competing. But yeah. now that I follow 200 people that do acting, I and, will feel inadequate because right. and of they're, that. They're uh, out of this, the 8 billion people who live on the planet, they are you know, the 50 odd best actors out of that 8 billion. And, <laughs> so and they're I'm super an idiot people. for following them. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Pandar's right though. Acting's a dead art. So. Oh, come on. He's right. No, he's so he's like actually Pandar is like so right about everything. Okay. So uh, let, let me let me first ask you then, why is acting a dead art? He's kidding. Oh. He's 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 you know, I've learned with trolls uh... to just give in. You know, like don't fight it, don't resist. Like it's that's my what's the ju it's ju is it jujitsu where you just like use the oh, other right. person's energy? Yeah. So I want to ask so you said chi, but you're not this is chi like another term for aura in a different practice or is it just like someone's vibration or depends on how you use the word. I could use it to mean a, a synonym a synonym for aura or something like that, but uh, you could also use it to mean specifically that kind of energy based off of Chinese medicine and Chinese philosophy. Um, or for that matter East Asian philosophy because it's not exclusive to China. But yeah. So so you're not seeing like a color around me, you're feeling and it's it's more of a feeling. Uh yeah, it's life energy. Got it. So how does your studying of those philosophies funnel into your coding capabilities? Damn, that's a good question. It is a good question. Uh, well, I mean, you know, on this back shelf, I have my Chinese philosophy and my Bhagavad Gita up there. Um, well, I would say the first thing is that um, when you're working with software, or when you're working with a computer, you're not ever really seeing what's in front of you. And one of the practices is to actually be able to read what is right in front of you. And I think most people who are trying to learn programming, and even those people who are really expert at it, um, uh, gloss over the fact that um, it's a very emotional thing. And the emotions that you're dealing with are actually your own. You are um, all the you you wouldn't think of it, but like just this little text panel, and that's all you got. Like, um, let me show you something like this. Um, I'll share my screen for a second so that I you can, can see, see it this. on the on the Twitch. Oh, you can. Okay, cool. So like you know, this is a terminal, right? This whatever feeling you get from looking at this, which you know for me is anxiety and angst and nervousness, um, is a reflection of what's going on in me. But it's not just a reflection, it's actually an amplification of my own mm. feelings feeding back to me in a feedback loop. Whoa. Yeah, so um, one of the things that software does for me is a way, it's a form of meditation where I get to learn about myself by how I work with the software. So you're not checking out, you're checking in. Yes, you have to, uh, because you could, uh, like, uh, I think you could maybe just try to divorce yourself from your own feelings and then do everything as if, you know, you don't have feelings and that you're like the computer somehow. Um, I think that'll get you so far. But yeah, if sure. eventually uh, all those feelings that you're denying are going to bubble up and just take over. So I, for me, the only way I can do it is by acknowledging myself while I'm working. And so hmm. what I develop and how I develop is a reflection of who I am. And 
what I'm feeling is a way of working through those meditations. It's kind of a yoga in a sense. Yeah. And I would say what little you and I, not little, but what you and I have talked about with a other, another project and just learning and how you work, you, and this, it's actually helped me to realize most people are working with a mission in mind, whether they realize it or have it articulated or not. That's true. And you definitely do. And you want not only the result of the code to show that or, or, or be a tool for that, you want the code to be a reflection of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in fact, I think um, one of the reasons why coding looks hard is because people are writing code really badly and then other people are going, oh, I can't understand this. I must not understand code. When in fact, they're just barely constructing sentences. The computer can compile it, but you know, like nobody's going to be able to understand that. And then they claim themselves to be experts after doing that to everyone else. It's when just in, a, when in reality, they're just siloing they're just, themselves. Correct. And they are profiting off of their Hi, poor quality. <laughs> JJ Johnny's. We got a new follower. Oh, nice. Cool. Ah, uh, dope. Yeah, followers. That means now we have six hundred sixty-seven. Ah, uh, too bad. <sighs> but too bad. Unless someone unfollows right now. <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, let me ask you about your experience with technology, because um, you use a ton of it. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Um, something I. Let's see, technology. Okay, I we had computers as a kid. Mm -hmm. I was, I had like I, we had AOL just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were Napster babies, so we did a lot of Napster. So that was there was a lot of literacy on that. I didn't I didn't move into torrenting. Um, uh, I think it took me a long time to understand that a lot of IT is more where I could, what am I trying to say? It, uh, I could Google it and learn it. Okay. Or ask someone to help me walk through it. Like yeah. some, sometimes I have an attention span to learn something. Other times I don't. So a lot of what I know with regards to technology is born of necessity and also um, need, need for control. So like, I I want my website to learn a certain look a certain way. I learned the code for WordPress in right. order to do that. Um, and and by proxy learned I have a specific set aesthetic with regards to graphic design. Can I build something? Not really. Could I use programs and figure it out together? Totally. So uh, now because of the pandemic specifically, I understand more technology than I ever have. Uh, I was specific. I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone, trying to troubleshoot a certain problem with uh, Final Cut Pro, and he's a brain like you are. And he, we were walking. He was walking me through different ways to troubleshoot it. And my mom was visiting, and she was like, "Jessica, you know so much." <laughs> and I'm like, I was actually just telling the story to Pandar. I was like, I don't know that I know so much, except for I know how his brain works. So. I was I was catering myself to his his brain speak and that meant I had to go okay I'm pretty sure that this is what this program does I'm pretty sure that this was like and I'm pretty sure this is what this means and uh Laurie Jones gives me a compliment often where she's like you'll use words in sentences before you know what they actually mean to see if you're getting it right and she she actually means that sincerely she uh Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for the compliment. I, I do also do paintings, and I and yeah. we can talk about that in another time. But um, that also was born out of like, oh, I think I can, I think I want to do this. I never took an art class. I, I basically let's put it this way, and we're gonna we're gonna simplify it. Whatever I set my mind to do, I have the universe given gift of being able to do it uh, with co competency. Cool. That's pretty much the entire show that I have is is, cool. is about that. <laughs> so cool. thank you for validating that. You're welcome. Um, and yeah, I, I got to say that the skill of being able to start with things without necessarily knowing exactly where they're going just yet, 
Um, and being able to live in that uncertainty is definitely the skill that a software developer would need to have as well. And it's really interesting. That, that, equ that equates to like vision, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like there are certain things that you, you need to follow as like North Star kind of things. But besides that, you know, the rest of it, you just, um, you just work on it. Um, speaking of time machines, actually, since uh, uh, Geek Filter is asking about that, um, uh, you, you actually are really good with typing, right? I, I remember yes. you saying that before the stream. Yes. Yeah. Um, good, and, good enough. Okay. Um, a lot of software development is about um, appearing to have the confidence that it's necessary so that other people will trust you to do what any human being could do. You're, down, you're dumbing down your, your skills. <laughs> uh, also a good key indicator of being a software developer is having a massive amount of imposter syndrome. So, yes. Oh, hi, Cat Plays. We do love a typing queen. I, before, as we were going live, I was testing to see what my uh, words per minute is currently at. And it's about it's at 68 with only with 90 percent accuracy and that's like me not even warming up so that's not too bad i could yeah. get to 100 with about 70 percent accuracy yeah <laughs> just being a high status to your keyboard or just feeling really comfortable around a keyboard uh just Ooh. immediately like makes everyone feel like oh okay you probably know what you're doing um, I, yeah no one loves more the than anything the clickety clack sound of a keyboard i'm actually i know i mentioned to you that i've playing Fortnite and I'm learning how to do it and it's one of the first games that I am actually attempting to learn with keyboard and mouse and that's where me not knowing like where my fingers go with number keys comes at a deficit uh -huh. is I can't I have to like look glance down and my old you know typing teacher would be really pissed if I was doing that <laughs> um but it, it, but I, but I, but like we have this intrinsically in us, right? Especially since we were kind of born with it, or we we got it at the right age mm -hmm. for us for it to be a tool that we mastered in a sense. Cool. Yeah. So what I'm going to teach, uh, or what we're going to learn today, I should say, because uh, we're going to explore this together. Because I'm not even all that good with this, um, but uh, we're going to learn the Vim editor. Okay. Um, and the Vim editor is here. Um, it is a uh, it is an old text editor, um, and old doesn't mean bad necessarily. Uh, old in this case means that a lot of people use it. There's plenty of documentation online for it. You can tell from the styling of this website that this has been around for a while, and the sure. people who designed it have not <laughs> ha not received any kind of funding to make it sexier. Uh, it is not. It is not that at all. Um, so uh, if I you love that they're just like 2020. Like, this is a coding. <laughs> this is a coding website. <laughs> yep, that's and right. And it looks like a fucking forum. <laughs> that's right. Um, Sorry so, for and... the ex explicitness. Oh no, no. Uh, you're 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 welcome to drop any f bam uh, any f bombs. F bombs. F bombs. F bombs is the it's the sequel to Tenenbaums. <laughs> yeah, the royal f bombs. Um, so. Let me just clear this real quick. Let me make it a little bigger. Um, I, I just want to show people what this looks like uh, in a terminal. Now, if you've got a Mac uh, or Linux machine, uh, this comes standard with it. It's also it's pre-installed. Um, if you've got Windows, you're going to need to Google how to install it, but it is not very complicated. Uh, Jessica did it um, like with three minutes to go before the stream started. So um, yeah. Uh, I'm I just really fast. She is also really, really fast. Which isn't a compliment to uh, myself. <laughs> whoa, whoa, we're really going there. So um, if I just type in the word Vim into the editor here, it shows up like this. And this looks mysterious. And one of the first things that people Google is how to ex actually exit Vim. Now, if you look here and you read, it's actually right there. <laughs> but people frequent, but People don't actually read. Read, um, or sometimes you're in another editor and it's not showing you this. So colon Q bang. Um, this this means quit and don't save. Um, and it's got all kinds of esoteric keyboard commands. But the idea with Vim 
uh, is not to use a keyboard and a mouse. It's to only use the keyboard for mm. everything. Mm. So it's got all kinds of keyboard shortcuts. And if you're really good at it, and you have good vim foo, uh, then you can actually move through this uh, seamlessly, changing things around uh, a whole lot. Um, yeah, who reads? I know. That's really all you need to do in order to be a software developer is read and then try stuff. And that's Honestly, it. that precludes me. <laughs> I know, it precludes me too, because frequently I don't read. I just look and I assume that it says something, and it doesn't say that. <laughs> so um, so much of that is, like, that's, yeah. that's why they put uh, contracts in small print, so we won't read them. Yeah, well, um, that's, that's really it. Uh, if you want to be a software developer, all you have to do is that. Um, so um, let, uh, have you share your screen, and let's, let's take a look at the, uh, the website that we're going to learn Vim with. So you don't want to see my porn channel. Uh, my, oh, I, have, I don't have a lot of followers on I, my OnlyFans yet, but... I think Outpost 13 would, would have a little, little like, something to say to me about that afterwards. Be like, it's personal. I um, get it. Yeah. Uh, they'd be like, hey, Ian, uh, we need to talk about what happened in the stream. That's okay. I just, I'm just <laughs> trying my best to not get invited back to an Outpost 13 <laughs> show. Well, um... Well, keep going. Um, I think they're pretty <laughs> permissive, though. So, it's... <laughs> uh, all right. So here we are at the Vim uh, thing. Uh, did you have that uh, that learn Vim by playing a game? Yeah. It's called Vim Adventures. Here we are. Nice. So let's make that a little larger. I can't wait. I'm so excited for this. I'm so glad we're playing games. All right. So, uh, let's start by press any key to start. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, what's this going on? This is very important. Oh dear. What is going on? <laughs> Hold on. This is, did I share my sound? No. Stop, sh stop share. Hold on. Did I, did I allow you to share sound? Is I'm that... doing it now. It's okay. I'm not hearing it. Not yet. This is very important because of what is said on that thing. Hello. So special this song I, you know you, i don't know if you know this about me i'm gonna put, i'm gonna drop the link in the chat johnny yeah. um i am a musician and i used to write i probably could if i wanted to still i wrote music this song is like killer like when when it goes oh it's real i don't know i sing it all the time it's like a good song <laughs> i'm just i was just trying to tell you like i have a lot of high like a brain, I'm a brain powered musician. I'm like, my opinion is really good. 
though. I'm just telling you, it's a good song. Wow. That was... Oh, I, I should be my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's Code and Coans. Yeah, it is. That, that okay. was brilliant. Thanks for sharing that. Look, hello world. It says hello world right here. Yeah, it does. Hello. Okay, okay. I'm going to gotta actually start the game now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got music. I'm glad you're sharing sound. So, uh, K H L J. Oh. I don't know what to do, but I'm just going to okay. figure it out. Yeah. You're already figuring it out. So, J, so H goes this way. Wait. Just to be on, on the same as the page. H goes this way. L oh. goes that way. K goes this way. <sighs> J goes that way. Uh, and you might wonder why those four. Because your four fingers can sit right on those keys and they don't have to move in order to move around. And so you're moving the cursor around like that. I hate this. <laughs> there you are. You're well, no. It. Yeah, kind of. What happens if you get on that little guy? Oh, look at that. What? Oh, oh. Go, go land on the guy. Okay, JJ. <laughs> Hooray, I can't believe it. The shadowy cursor has come at last. Soon the old prophecy will be fulfilled. Hold on. Hold on. J J J J J. H H H H H. Oh, I can't move. There are certain places where it won't let you move uh, because it's a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what do I need to do with him? Uh, that's it. Uh, now let's go and in, go into that maze. Yeah, nice, nice. So from this, you're learning uh, muscle memory in order to yes. work with the editor. Remember, words are not words. Huh, that's a mysterious saying. That is mysterious. Okay. Looks like he went over that ramp and who knows? Well, there. There's a built-in there's a built-in help system in this game. If you ever need a full explanation and example on what a key does or how it's used, just type colon, colon help. help followed by the key. For example, try quote colon help J unquote without the quotes. So the help screen for a specific key will also be displayed when you collect a key, but sometimes you'll need to ask specifically for the capital variation of a key. Holy moly cannoli. What, no, Panda, it's exactly what I was thinking about, like, how much this is going to hurt my head because I'm learning Wasta right now. <laughs> and I was like, why am I learning another way to move with my keyboard? It's, it's actually, it's, I'm upset a little bit. That's why I said it was scary. Okay. Let's so see. that colon help is the same way that you would do it inside the Vim editor if you wanted to get help I figured, that which I like that. It's just, oops, it's just acclimating you. Yeah. So it looks like there's a treasure chest there that maybe at some point you can get. But well, I guess I can't figure it um, out yet. Not oh, yet. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, whoa. Okay. And I'm glad you don't know about the uh, the arrow keys. Yes, Vim allows the cursor keys in order to move around, so this game allows it. However, for a pure Vim experience, you should stick to using HJKL. It's considered more efficient since you don't have to move your hand from the home row when you're typing. But since this is a game, it allows both. You can decide what's best for you. I like that. OK. Good to know. Yep. I feel a little bit told, but. <laughs> you are. You have been. A little um, bit. If there's one thing uh, uh, software developers are, it's opinionated. <laughs> That's really funny. And you can also hold the button down and just skim across too that way too. Uh yeah, the the tactile in me is enjoying Yay! the click. Oh, okay. To reach but but good to know. The tr the treasure chest to reach a treasure chest, you should know words are separated by spaces. You need W E and B buttons, capitals to navigate words what okay. yes so it's, 
I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, look at that. There's a key down there. That looks like something you'll want. Oh. Uh... Yeah, I need to. Yep. Well, I was supposed to find out the hard way. It's going to teach you um, uh, each command in turn. Okay, so you got a key. Your mom's got a key. She does. She needs it to get into her house. Hi, Pepper. So, uh, in that case, now we have the dub. What was it? What were those again? It was W, E, and B, right? Yeah, web. D okay. Capital W, E, and B. Cool. Great. So let's go over to that 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 uh, that bang mark there. Bang is what developers say when they mean the exclamation point. I hate it. <laughs> Go to bang. Because it's the only time they can bang, get it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was kidding. I don't have the B of. button. Okay, uh, we need the B button in order to go back. Uh, it looks, and we don't have the, what was it? Um, so W, hold on, W, E, B. I don't have any of them. Okay, so it looks like we're going to need to go and find them in order to use it. So, did you know this, and you're just making me go on a wild goose chase? It's been like three years since I did it's this. It's been one week to look at me. OK, wait. Go. Oh, the wrong way. Got it. Yep. Wait. There we are. I don't like that sound. It's telling me I'm doing it wrong. Wait, I got nowhere to go. Yeah, you do. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I do. I get confused. I've never seen a ramp in a maze before. <laughs> well. Welcome to Vim Adventures, where ramps are serious business. Do I have to search everywhere? No. Okay. So, like, that's just dumb that that's there and looks like it could go somewhere? Um, you know what I'm like... saying? Like, look, like, I know I can't go anywhere. Why is it here? Um, okay. You should talk to the game developers. Okay. <laughs> it's a place where you could get lost if you wanted to. Got it. I guess if we made the screen smaller and we couldn't see as far, then that would that that wouldn't seem as useless. Well, that's a good point, but also, I could just get lost by the sheer fact that I still don't know how to navigate quite well. Yippee! That is the funniest sound. <laughs> Moving up or down with to a shoreline, i.e., into water, moves you to the last column in the shoreline. But if you keep moving, the longer line you'll end up in the same column where you started. What? Okay, let's read that again. Uh, moving up or down to a shorter line, not into the water. Oh! Uh, go up one. Yippee! Go up, go up again. Ah! Go all the way to the end there. So this is going to get you past that ramp. Now go down, just down all the time. Down, 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 Yippee. down, down. Ah, look, you're on the other side of the ramp. Why didn't it put me here? What? Why did it put you there? Why did it? So let me let me uh, see if I can annotate your screen so that you can see this. Not blue. That's a terrible color. Uh, what's your favorite color? You like yellow. orange, pink? I feel like you're an orange, pink, or a yellow person. Yeah, let's do orange for now because it goes good against the blue. Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, so. Because of the fact that you were here, right? When okay. you take the down arrow, it remembers that this is actually your spot. So even though it goes to where it is here, then here, then here, then here, it goes as far as it possibly can when you go down like that. Once you get to here, it puts you there. And it can't go one more over because it was the furthest? Uh, yes. So that's why? That's right, yeah. So if I were to, let's see. So, so when you're at the end of a line and you go down, it puts you as far as you were on your other line. If, got it. So if, if the box was here. Yes, you would it, end up. It would take me here. Correct, yeah. And but it wouldn't take me here this whole way because this is where it ends. That's right. And if. Wait, one so, second. So this right here is almost like, this thing is almost like a little box of text, right? So you have okay. like a line, a line, a line, a line, another line. And so to get here, but not go across in order to do it, you can go down. 
So here's my question and my little bit of concern. Why isn't, so if I have text yeah. that's hello, and I want to go all the way to the end of the text, why? Isn't why? It, why isn't it going to the end of the text? Uh, well, let's see here. <laughs> Pandar says, Jess hasn't drawn anything lewd. I think she's been replaced by a clone. Challenge accepted. Uh, well, here we are as a first in coding Cohen's. <laughs> Look, it's a guy with a big nose. Good. Uh, great. Yeah, definitely a guy with a big nose. Good. How do I clear? It's not letting me clear. I'm trying. <laughs> clear all my drawings. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you are going down, um, just God damn it. Um, all right. If you were moving your the cursor train of down, uh-huh. Um, and you you wanted to get to the end of this line over here, even though these ones don't get you all the way over, it's not going to end you here. It's going to end you there. I guess this, here's my question. Let's say this was let's say this didn't exist up here. Okay. And let's say this was the end of this line. Yes. And let's say this line goes to here. Sure. And this line goes to here. Right. And this line goes all the way over to here. Right. This only can go as far as this? Yes. So if, if this one ends here or if this one ends here, it will never go here. Uh, not this way. Not by hitting the down arrow. There are other ways you can do it. I just got it. I totally got it. Someone said her name followed by God damn it. Oh, yeah, not a clone. <laughs> yes, that's how it goes. Okay, so, oops, I accidentally used. Oh, wait, oh, wait, stop. Okay, and now we go back. Hmm. Ooh, conundrum that I think I know how to solve because I had to ask a bunch of questions. Why can't I play this game? Okay. Here we are. Nice. Hold on. You got it. You're there. Wait. Shoot. You know. I know how to do this. <gasps> so confusing. There we go. Very good, oh, Shadow Yuan. You learned the HJKL skill. Go on. Oh my gosh. Wait, I didn't get the I didn't get the chest. Uh, wait, there's a W right here. You'll want that. I see. I have to collect it. Yep. Okay, fine. <laughs> wait, what happened? Whoa. I missed what that said. Uh, uh, I think it just scrolled there it for will, you. Okay, there will come a time before open source's golden era. When the bugs rule the land and the darkness is deep. But from the shadows, a shadowy one emerges to restore the old code and the power of them will prevail. <laughs> Look at that, Vim totally rules. It's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, welcome to software so developer people. So we are the lamest. <laughs> No, it's so great. <laughs> to fulfill the prophecy, you have to understand Vim words. A word is a sequence of letters, digits, and underscores, or a sequence of punctuation marks, or empty line. Finding W, B, and E will help you navigate words. I can't move up. Oh, this way I can. Get that W. Nice. W motion counts words forward. What? Position the cursor at the beginning of a word. A word, see, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm out, I'm out now. I can't, it's too much reading. Okay, position uh, the cursor at the beginning of the word. A word, comma, see, help word, consister, consists of a sequence of letters, digits and underscores, or a sequence of other non-blank characters separated with white space. Yeah, so it's any grouping of things that are not white space, that's a word. Spaces? 
So Tabs. like so you so are. so like hash dollar uh, 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 bang uh, ampersand is technically a word this way. So long as there's space before it and space after. Gotcha. So they're basically using word the word word generously. Yes. Got it. Uh, okay, hold on. Two words, one word. Oh, okay. Okay. So that means uh, that in order to go to the beginning of there you are, W. W. Woo! Now you can move fast. Bye everybody! Peace out! Now you can get that E too while you're I at know. it. I <laughs> know. Sorry, I'm excited. Um <laughs> Panda art, honestly, that is the reason. <laughs> she does intimidate my paragraphs. I do. They go, oh, no. That's what, if you see an email from me, it usually has, like, underline, highlight, exclamation points, and, like, separated. So, like, when I want people to know things, I, 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 I put it out in paragraphs. That's also that, how I learned things. So. That, by the way, is an excellent skill for a software developer to have. If there's one thing I hate, it's a wall of code. Like... Why? Make it small. Make it easy. Break it apart into individual pieces. You don't I need love it that. to be that. I don't need to read all of that. I just need I to know that. about the part I need to know about. <laughs> I love that. Okay, cool. I feel yeah. vindicated. Yeah. Okay. And Panda is the worst. So, <laughs> hold on. E motion. Forward to the end word. Count. <laughs> what does count mean? Why is it in brackets? Okay. Hold on. Uh, let me see where you... Oh, yeah. Forward to the end of word, um, number of words, I guess, count is. I don't know what that is exactly. Um, Pandar might know. But... Position the cursor at the end of a word does not stop in an empty line. What is that? What does an empty line mean? Um, okay, there are two ways that we can do this. We can either read this and understand it, or we can just hit the button and see what happens. Well, no, you have to read it for your chat to hear it, because there are some people that don't watch. And I learn this way. Okay. That's fair. So a let's, word. let's continue with reading the words. Consists of a sequence of letters, digits, and underscores. Oh, wait, we already did that. You already told us that. Yeah. So okay, so E. Takes you to the oh, end of the... So a comma is not part of that word, technically. Uh, yes. Uh, so for the E thing, um, it treats stuff that's at the end of a word as not really... Um, is not really the word. Because otherwise, like, in, there's a reason for it when you're coding, because you might have, like, a series of curly braces or parentheses or things like that uh, at the end, and you don't want to go all the way to that. You want to stop at the word and change the word. Got it. Yeah. Even though word could mean... Yes. So now we've got two definitions of word, right? I love it. Yep. That's what we call overloaded uh, definitions in software, by the way is not necessarily a great thing. Well, it's all good. Yeah, let's see. Let's check out oh. that B. Get the, get the B. Where is it? Um, Hold on. I need I to find lost. a yellow key to unlock this door. OK, cool. So uh, go back up. Get oh, it's B. right there. The B motion. The, position the cursor at the beginning of a word. Consists of a sequence. OK, hold on. So B goes back. You need to be in text. So if you go B, yeah, B, 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 C. Cool, 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 cool. So W, 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 E, 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 B, 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 B. Yep. So I'll need that for. See that? Yeah. Oh no. So you need to, you I got need it. to, you need to type B it. on the period there. Oh! And get the key. Oh, really, fool? Oops. You're almost there. Nope. Oh no! It's, wait, because it's not the end of a word! There we are. Wait. That rock house is part of that word. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. I it, would consider I mean, that it, to be it, white space. It, oh, it screwed me up. But <sighs> that's okay. I learned. So have you ever heard of Vim Golf, by the way? No. 
So Vim Golf is where you try to get something done with as few character strokes as possible. Oh. And whoever gets it done with the least amount of character strokes is the one who wins Vim Golf. That's a game I want to play one day. <laughs> it is a game for nerds. I get it though. <laughs> I I did I did words per minute before we went live. Okay, we got through one. There's a second. And now... Ooh, very good, Oshadu Waiwan. You learned some word navigation. I suggest you head for the dreadful text islands with me careful. Wait, why can't I go back and get that chest? You don't have any keys. And you can. <sighs> and I think you could now. You just need a key. But I think if you went back, you could go and grab it. So this is kind of stealing... Okay. This reminds me of Super Mario Brothers 3, especially with the flute and going into different islands. Did they use Vim to, to create Super Mario Brothers 3? I have no idea. It's probably unlikely because the game was created in... Vim is ancient. Is it? Oh, yes. It is, like, from the 70s. Honestly, then it probably is because the way this what? guy's moving is like, is, like, Super Mario. Let me look, th let me look this up real quick. Vim history. Let's see if I can find... Uh, yeah, it looks like... Um, Bram Molinar began working on Vim for the Amiga computer in 1988. First public release, Vim V1.14? This is episode 1.14 of Coding Cohen's as well, by the way. What? Yes. See, serendipity. In 1991 um, was the first public release of it. At the time, its first release, the, the name VIM was an acronym for VI Imitation, but changed to VI Improved in late 1993. Okay. Mm. So. So, no. It is uh, free, open source software. Um, uh, you can, uh, they have a donation thing that donates to uh, children in Uganda. Um, uh, and it is just a, but yeah, um, if you use Vim, um, and this is about as far as we can get today, I think. Um, if you use Vim uh, to uh, develop software, people will assume that you know a lot of other things. That's really funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, are you talking about the, the sound that the guy makes or what I just said? What you just said. Okay, yeah. Because um, people are funny. You, yeah, I, I, like, I love your comprehension of like human nature and, and as it relates to getting jobs. And, and like we're def especially like as improvisers, we're like the great, great con artists, you know? Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, you see, the thing is like, it's it's all about just figuring things out and whether you can figure them out. But a lot of people like, you know, uh, I mean, it's it's pretty normal for for um, uh, business people to sort of treat it as like, well, we want someone who's already trained in this thing and has experience. And yes, but the experience that you need is the experience of learning how to figure things out for the first time, because no matter how many times you've created a Rails app or a React app, um, every one of them is unique and different. And it's not just, you know, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, building the same house over and over again. You're always encountering things that you've never seen before, and you're always learning. So the skill that you need to really develop is learning, except that that's not a skill that you can sell. So the skill that you sell is your ability to work with some of these tools so that you can look credible. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, uh, but if you, but, and then once you do work with those things, you work with them a lot, you start to actually like them. Um, and it starts to get really fun to use them. Uh, and uh, it can make programming really enjoyable. What's fascinating reason. to me is this is digital, but it feels so analog because <laughs> of the keyboard. Yes. Which is is satisfying, right? And kind of like the best of both worlds in a sense. 
Right, because you're working with you're working uh, in in a way that is close to the metal. Ooh, it's a good. That's a fun phrase to know. Close, close to, the, to metal. the metal. Is that like? Does it have to do with the natural uh, rare metals that are in our soil, and you have dug close to it? It's more like or to your inside, like the metal you're made of. Wow. Those are interesting ways of phrasing that. Um, Do you know what I mean? You know, he's made he's, he's made of good metal. Close to the metal, yeah. Um, yes, because when you're working with text that way, you know, again, coming back to that idea of you're only ever seeing a reflection of your own feelings bounced back at you. Whoa. So it's specifically a developer turn. Yes. You want to be so being close to the metal is um, means that you're close to the hardware and the processor, rather than being layers and layers of abstraction away from it. Wild. So um, using a VR interface is not close to the metal, because the VR interface is abstracting like five different things, so that you can see it prettily, but to see it uh, in a way that is... Um, so it's kind of like you're seeing the scaffolding. Well, not scaffolding, but like the, the inner... Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, have you ever... Uh, do you know much about architecture? Not really, no. Although, in a different life, it would have been one, probably. Probably not. But I wish I knew more about it, to be honest. Have you ever been to the Huntington Library? I have. So uh, for our audience who is not in LA, uh, the Huntington Library is a botanical garden, surprisingly enough, that has very little, like you don't see very many books there. They do have books, you're not allowed to see them. Uh, <laughs> they're, for, um, uh, they're for scholars. Um, uh, but uh, th in the botanical garden, they've got like all these different botanical gardens all around, it's like 200 acres. Uh, and one of them is a Chinese garden. Uh, and it's a traditional Chinese scholar's garden. Uh, and the way it is constructed is that it, uh, all the, let me see if I can show some pictures of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so, let's see if I can. So the Chinese garden, there's some pictures. This isn't that great of a shot. I want to see if I can get one that's good, good of the architecture. So here we are. That's a video. Video where? That's a video up there. The shot that you thought it was is Vimeo. Go up. Oh, it is. On um, one more. Yeah. Well, I want to be the video, so I'm going to not use that for now. That's interesting. That must be new. Um, so, uh, in order to. So here's a here's a good example. Um, so this is on the inside of this pavilion right here um, are these reliefs of various plants, but you'll notice that they don't use very bright, vivid colors. It's this sort of brownish red, right? Mm -hmm. And it's designed to sort of uh, influence or, or look at the wood. So it's, it's emphasizing the craftsmanship, the construction of mm. this... Um, this architectural piece. And so it's not trying to put a fancy facade over that so that you don't notice that it's constructed really poorly. Um, the artistry, the design, is the scaffolding itself. Wow. So in the same so sense... So if your code can is, be a version of artistry... Right. In a sense. That's fascinating. I love that illusion. So, yeah, it's, it's um, not hiding, um, not, not hiding the skeleton or, or not hiding what's underneath the, the, the clothes um, with something that is, yeah, right. Um, takes a lot of courage to, uh, to do that, jokes aside. Um, <laughs> uh, 
And yeah, that's sort of the same idea with code when you're working close to the metal, is that you are putting the pieces together and you're letting it speak for itself rather than hiding all these bugs under a really fancy design that's designed to distract you from how poorly you constructed the thing. Fascinating. Yeah. I love that. I, I, yeah, you're uh, the perfect person to, to do this kind of show because of, A, your respect for the medium itself, but also your philosophy follows suit with it. And you have to want to teach people, too, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the reason that I have a job is because um, I had mentors who took a chance on me. And I feel that that would be highly disrespectful if I failed to do the same in turn. Yeah, I, I'm sure they saw something in you, though, too. Well, I mean, you know, when it, comes to, when, it, when it comes to me, it's really just about, you know, do they do it? If they do it, then I help them. If they stop doing it, then there's... That's that's as far as I'm going, but I know. mean that's how I am with most anything too. Like, hey, I will help you. Are you? How much of the weight are you carrying? Do you right. need a little extra help? Um, yeah, yeah, I totally, I totally relate to that. Yeah. Hi, Pepper. <gasps> I am being blessed right now by. Oh, okay. She just wants my water. Hi, come on. Do you want to say hi to everybody on the internet? She's famous on my stream. Come on, little girl. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, who's the pretty girl? She's oh okay, don't get too scared. I think she saw herself on screen and was like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> okay. What is that? It's okay, little girl. They're nice. Well, okay, so ask me any questions in our remaining time together. Um hmm. That's a good question. Well, um, Pandar has something to say. Uh, I went to the library last week and asked the librarian where they kept the books on Paranoia. She whispered quietly to me, they're right behind you. Did you see, you see my Hellraiser uh, Bob Ross? Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. Um, so before you started this, what do you think about your ability to write software or to code? I feel like I didn't know anything and now I know everything. Really? Wow. Um, my ability. I think if I really wanted to do it, I could. Yeah. I think I thought that before. I think I could still do it if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I only increasingly gain, uh, I, in the same way that one might draw a sense of wonderment at my presence, I, I look at someone who codes and goes, dude, you're so fucking smart. And like, so I, I, in a way, I want to learn that world because I think I equate it to a certain amount of intelligence or understanding. But I also have a reverence for the, the, the skill that goes into it. Hmm. Yeah, um, I, I guess my I, I don't know what that answers that. I guess my point uh, is in that regard, to go along with that is that they're not as smart as you think they are. They are just, you're just as smart as they are. And in some ways, what you could add to software uh, might be exactly what they need. Yeah, I, for it, especially having talked to you before the, uh, this stream, it definitely feels like all things, an aesthetic and approach to anything. Um, it, do you like making pretty code? Do you like being thorough? Are you organized? You know, uh, when I look at other people's desktops, I'm like, holy fuck, how do you even exist? And I thought I was disorganized. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not in comparison to your desktop. And I get it that some people work that way, but I wouldn't and I couldn't. So 
Well, if you know where everything is on that desktop and you're the only one who's ever going to use it, then it's one thing. But if you are leaving it that way for other people to work with, no, that's another I'm, I disagree with you. It's a, <laughs> it's a snapshot into their life if they don't have an organized desktop or Google Drive or cloud. You know Ann Bogart, right? No. Um, viewpoints? Oh, you mean the person who originated viewpoints that Impro does and teaches? I, yes. I know only the viewpoints exercise. Um, well, uh, when I was in college, uh, I had a very snooty professor who uh, quoted Ann Bogart all the time. But uh, one of those quotes was kept, step, stayed with me. Uh, and it was, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. No wonder I'm a mess. <laughs> ah. Well, you can't see it because the camera is pointed exactly at the at the nice stuff, but it's a just it's just a garbage heap <laughs> where the this, camera is not. <laughs> this looks like it's sort of put together. I got the specific kind of bedding I got is meant to be like disheveled. It's like, oh look, I just threw this three hundred dollar blanket on my bed. Oh, <laughs> you mean these? They're wrinkly because they're supposed to be. It really goes with my aesthetic pretty well. But yeah. I've never made my bed more in my entire life than during the pandemic because of the direct view you have into it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't sense. also care to make my bed. Like, because fuck that. I'm going to go right back into it. <laughs> yeah, and frequently throughout the day. <laughs> I, I might, I might, if I don't go to Fortnite right now, I might go to bed. Hmm. Today, yeah. I literally, this was all I had to do. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I could get you up out of bed for a minute or two. <laughs> it's been a rough week, and I'm, at least I'm following through, but. Uh, no, I was, I was very much looking forward to this. This is an easy commitment. Nice. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, I think I need to uh, thank a few people uh, towards the end of the stream, because we're pretty much at the end here. Uh, my production liaison is Matt Pittner. Um, also, the designer for the show is Aaron Harvey. You can find his show here on Outpost 13, Infinite Trek. He's so talented. Um, yes, he is. And you can see it from the designs that he has bestowed upon this show. Um, then my marketer is Lucas Vanosik. He has a show called Two Liars, which is a game show where it's three contestants versus three contestants. They have to guess one of the three of them is telling the truth, the other two are lying, and they're making stuff up on the spot, and you have to figure out who's telling the truth and who's lying. Um, and then my bot master is Cody Bushy. Uh, he has a show called An Actor Unprepared uh, on this channel where he brings in an actor, a director, and a writer, and has them put to monologue together right there on the spot. Um, and music is Alex uh, Khan and Arlo Sanders made up music, uh, which they have had a show. It may come back, uh, but you can find their stuff on Spotify under made up music, and it is great. They made it right here on the channel with everyone else. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much what I've got. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, and at this point, it's time for the awkward end of the show that we get uh, at the end of any software conference where the two engineers have no idea how to socially, gracefully exit. Oh, I guess she, she left. OK, uh, well, um, I'm going to end the stream then. Uh, bye, everybody. I think that was OK. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now.